Richard's Russia on Off the Ball. Do you like the name? I think it's brilliant. <laughs> Thanks to Flexify, finance made simple. Who knows what Richard's Russia is going to be? I, mean, I don't even know. See Flexify.com. Go and sort yourself old key. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, Rishtard's Russia. Here we are, Rishtard, for one more Rishtard's Russia. Yes, yeah, um, a reflective Rishtard. Uh, uh, well, it's, well, it's, you know, withdrawal oh. symptoms. Oh, we're, yeah, all, okay. we're, all, we're all feeling it. You can kind of tell in the, in the station there's a, there's a feeling of withdrawal. Um, it hit me today, I must say, more so than yesterday, that it's really over. Yeah, well, that's, it's like a hangover. It was you know, it's not the next day, it's the, yeah. the day after. Yeah, there was an afterglow yesterday, everyone in the office, did you think Croatia deserved it? Yeah, you know, talking about it. Yeah. And today, well, today there is just nothing. There is just nothing, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a pity as well, the timing, I think, with Wimbledon, that the Wimbledon wasn't going on for another week. Mm. But we missed, you know, I mean, we were indoors for a lot of the sunshine. Uh, so we missed the sunshine. Missed quite a few of the matches, actually, like the ones in the early stages. And, uh, and now it's just gone. It's just gone. You've watched your fair share of World Cups. I felt it was a great World Cup. Mm. Now, it often depends on your interpretation of the word great, and the very popular thing to say is, well, the quality wasn't quite up to scratch. But, uh, yeah. you know, I suppose it was exciting. If you were a simple-minded type, it was an exciting World Cup, but it wasn't great in the true sense. Was it not great? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I, it felt, to me, it felt like there was something a little bit missing. Oh. Uh, and it was very entertaining. There was lots of good uh, matches, uh, loads of goals. Uh, there was one nil all, was there? Uh, maybe two nil alls. Um, so yeah, it was. It was. It was. Uh, it was very entertaining. Um, I felt like the fact that Spain, Germany, and Argentina went out so early mm. that maybe made one half of the draw a little bit unbalanced and a little bit easier. But uh, at the same time, I was delighted from a material point of view that England went as far as they did, and and also from an interest point of view. I mean, they do provide. You know, and we all kind of were saying the same thing that it's it's just how do we want them to be beaten. Um, is it, you know, tragically or with sort of, you know, a humane, a kind of a humane exit. Yeah. But I think it was fairly, I think it was, they, they went out, uh, they proved themselves, they, they went as far as they possibly could and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't horrific, their exit. Mm. The final was weird. Yeah. It was a weird game, it was a weird medal ceremony, it was just kind of weird from start to finish. Yeah. You. It was, it was, and obviously, you know, the VAR decision, it was bound to raise its ugly head. Uh, the referee with the strangest haircut, I think, of, of the whole uh, tournament, and that's, that's saying something compared to a lot of the players and, and Liam Brady. But um, he definitely had the weirdest haircut. Uh, and, I mean, I thought, thought the, the medal ceremony was incredible. You know, Putin, Macron, and, and the Croatian president, Kalinda Grabar, uh, Kitrovic, yeah. and she was certainly doing a fair bit of grabbing um, of the of anyone that was going by. <laughs> and the rain was, as we saw, bucketing down, and appears to be only one umbrella. Which, obviously, if you're Russian, you're going to give it to Putin. Um, and it looked as well like he had got injections, like that he had this filler in his face. So maybe they were thinking ahead with regard to that as well, that his face might actually fall off uh, during the ceremony. But uh, yeah, lengthy hugs from the Croatian uh, president to everyone on both teams, including the coaching staff and assistant refs and, and, and fourth official. And you'd suspect even the, the VAR lads uh, in the studio would, be, would have been warmly received oh, by her as well had they, had they been there, regardless of the, the decision. It's, uh, it's such transparent politicking though, isn't it? I mean, like, like literally, it was hard to know if Macron was more thrilled that France had won the World Cup or that he was getting this kind of face time to a billion people. Yeah. And I'm, I yeah. dare say it was probably just the latter by 5-10%. Uh, well, it's, I mean, it, it's an incredible stage, isn't it? You know, uh, who, there's very few people that aren't going to see that. Yes. Uh, He's linked in the, in the subconscious of every French mind but one of the greatest day of their lives. Yeah. That counts yeah. for something in the ballot box in a few years' time. Definitely. And he, uh, almost, uh, well, not even almost, but, but very seriously and strongly connected to the success. Um, so yeah, he's there. He's there for for forever and a day. I would I would have thought for as long as he wants to be. Um, but she she attended every Croatia match. Uh, you know, travelled economy class, sat in the stands with the players. So um, you'd have to say hats off to her for that. And uh, you know, I suppose it's it's proper leadership compared to somebody like Trump. Um, uh, but it would have been lovely to have seen maybe Trump's hair getting that wet. It would have been. <laughs> 
It would have been really interesting, actually, what, what your man would have done to hold the umbrella, <laughs> Trump or Putin. And I mean, he would have gone with Putin, I presume. Yeah. But uh, I would give anything to see Trump uh, after a shower, I was going to say, but maybe I should rephrase that. I mean, it's an image. Yeah. So, um, and then I guess Deschamps is there in the middle of all this. He's, what, the third man in history to win a World Cup on the pitch and on yeah. the touchline. Yeah. And it's even hard to know how brilliant a job, like it's, it's hard to know how brilliant France were, it's hard to know how brilliant a job he did, it just seems like it all happened all too easily for them. Well, yeah, I mean, except for, uh, I suppose, the way um, Pogba played and the way he got a lot of the players to play, mm. um, but particularly Pogba, you'd have to say. Oh, I should uh, say, I've no doubt he's done a brilliant job. Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. I just don't, you know. But he doesn't just, look like, he doesn't look like, if you were to see him on this, he doesn't look like a World Cup uh, winning captain or World Cup winning manager. He look. He doesn't look French even. He looks more like, you know, a hotel manager from from Waterford uh, <laughs> in need of a trip to the dentist. Um, Hello, welcome to the Waterford Arms Hotel, boy. Have you any bags? <laughs> um, there's just something about his face that looks very Irish to me. But um, he, um, yeah, you know, he he wouldn't make it on Love Island. But uh, he did. He did an incredible job. And um, I mean, it is an interesting thing with certain players. Uh, like, are they more? respectful of managers that have made it as a player, that have won big as a player. Mm. Uh, and I know you get this kind of examples where that's not the case, like Mourinho. But is Mourinho maybe, has, has he reached that point of, of exasperation, you know, like the players feeling that way about him? Mm. That I think, well, what have you actually done? What have you actually done as a player? Certainly from Pogba's, looking at Pogba, you'd have to say that uh, he hasn't got the best out of him and uh, Deschamps seems to have. Yeah. Um, so... I don't know. Is it is it a is it just a personality thing, or is it the fact that Deschamps has been such a massively successful, iconic French captain? Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I, I uh, you know, did they deserve to win the the whole thing? You'd have to say they did. They had the best. I would have thought the best group of players, didn't they? Yeah. Um, they're just the most talented squad, basically. Yeah, yeah, and they seemed to bring on anyone they brought on was was uh, was it wasn't even a replacement. It was. Where did you spend the bulk of your time, TV wise, across the three on the schedule? Um, I suppose mainly on RTE, uh, but but some BBC time and some ITV time. But the ITV time was spent more after the fact. Um, you know, it was more. Uh, research uh, than it was live okay. um, but uh, yeah I mean I, the, the, the stuff with, with Keane and Wright yeah. on ITV was was uh, I mean it's been well documented at this stage but uh, I mean it was absolutely nuts the whole thing of, of you know you're getting carried away you're getting carried away you know and you're thinking well, well why shouldn't the fans and the pundits enjoy the moment and Ian Wright said no no you're misunderstanding me it's like it's like you know we, we're, we're happy what's wrong with being happy and uh, he said, "No, but you're getting you're getting too carried away." And uh, like either way, you kind of think, "Well, you know, whatever Ian Wright does, or whatever they do in the studio, or whatever the fans do, it's surely not going to affect the result, one way or the other." Totally. I was I was watching that argument, and it was like this one of the more compelling arguments of the World Cup. And so, what is Roy's issue if Ian Wright gets excited? Like uh, Ian Wright's perfectly entitled to get carried away. He's not there necessarily for the most sober of analysis. He is there. I guess it's England, it's at a World Cup, he's entitled to get carried away. This had no bearing on the team whatsoever no. or how they performed and is no insight as to if the team did get carried away or didn't get carried away. No, but it, it seems like there was something about Ian Wright's happy head yeah. that caught Roy Keane and he didn't <laughs> like the look of it. Yeah, I was surrounded by Gary Neville as well. And, <laughs> you know, you're, you're planning where you're going to watch. You're planning like the, the parade, you're planning the final. It hasn't played the semi-final. And, you know, <laughs> you, you seriously suspect that Roy would have told Neil Armstrong not to get carried away for landing on the moon. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, uh, you've only landed on it. You know, you don't own it. You haven't colonised it. You, you're not, you, you haven't even walked on it. You're just bouncing around in a spacesuit. One, st one small step for mankind. Well, I don't know about that. It's nonsense. You're getting carried away, Armsy. Um, yeah, I think uh, he... Uh, I mean, uh, it was interesting to see Ian Wright stand up to him, though. Like, very few people do stand up to him. And do a terrible Irish accent. Well, I mean, it was the balls of the man to do the big final. <laughs> I, most people, if Roy Keane's given them the thousand-yard stare, I mean, I guess journalists would be at the, um, more, more often than not, at the wrong end of this. You just freeze a little bit, and you're just like, uh-oh. Yeah. I've, I've, 
poke the bear. Yeah. Whereas Ian Wright stood up. He's like, I don't care if you're Roy Keane. Like, you yeah. know, I'm yeah. going to take the piss out of you and I'm not afraid of you. I know. And it's not often... I was really curious to watch Roy in that environment because I wasn't sure would it go and explode or if Roy back down, meeting somebody else to get down with him. In the end... Mark Pugach jumped in and talked for the next five minutes anyway, as is his want, because it was just getting interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, but I mean, I thought the the the, the laughter Neville and um, Lee Dixon, Dixon I think, yeah. was in the middle. It was it, like insanely <laughs> nervous laughter. Wasn't oh it? yeah, it was like ah, this is the joke. <laughs> you know, this is yeah, you joke, and yeah, it was there was there was definitely that sort of reaction. Uh, but also, and Neville going, I've seen this before. I know how this ends. Yeah. I know how yeah. this ends. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's probably why Mark Pugash intervened. Um, Did you like England as a matter of interest? Like, I mean, they they seem to be very popular, obviously, with the English um, public. And there was this general discussion here about, well, they seem, you know, we sort of like this team. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I did, uh, and they definitely, um, you know, they came across as being humble and. Uh, you know, sort of delighted to be there, mm. which I've never really seen before with an English team, and probably the media expectation was 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 quite low as well. Yeah. And but um, yeah, they're definitely definitely you know both modest. I thought both Harry Kane and uh, and Gareth Southgate. Kane speaks like he's eating sausages at the same time <laughs> as speaking, which is probably something that endears him to a lot of people as well. <laughs> and as said, obviously quite a lot as well, with small margins, but. <laughs> Small margins, but they score more goals than us. So obviously, uh, uh, that's why they that's why they won. <laughs> and he actually did say that they scored more goals than us. That's why they won. And you can't argue with that kind of logic. The best thing about uh, Richard's Russia, I think, has been the fact that your Harry Kane is identical, and they both work to your Rio Ferdinand. That is the great. That has been the great discovery. Uh, well, we're, we're, uh, uh, Rio Ferdinand is a little bit deeper, and he he's kind of more down there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and also, he's got. He looks like he's got an elastic band. There's an elastic band kind of thing going on in his mouth. Uh, but Gareth Southgate as well. I think he's, um, you know, he's kind of very measured the way he speaks, and he's got this slight sibilance as well, which I think makes him seem a bit more intelligent than perhaps he actually is. I think he's, you know, he speaks slowly. He's got a certain sort of way of delivering things, which. Um, leads to people thinking that he has thought quite deeply about this. And, uh, you know, I'd like to thank uh, London Tube for renaming uh, Southgate um, to Gareth Southgate uh, for two days. It's a real measure of the esteem in which I'm held, and basically I'll never be forgiven for missing that bloody penalty mm. in Germany against Germany. But um, he's going to be given free reign, I think, isn't he? He's... Uh, Five million a year, 2022. And a hundred grand a public uh, speaking appearance. Is right? isn't it? Similar to yourself, Joe. Well, listen. Um, before tax. Yeah. Changes. Yeah, which you don't pay tax. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, Dennis picks that up, yeah, I'd say, does he? So, wait, 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 what do you want to talk about next? <laughs> um... Yeah, uh, well, there's, there's uh, Brady. Brady uh, we're, we were talking about um, Brady and the hair, and he actually did say after the, after the final that um, he was suggesting that Pogba had such a good World Cup because he had a normal haircut. Yeah, I saw that too. And Dunphy had been on that as well, about Neymar, you know, his hair. You know, he's, he's more concerned about his hair. Uh -huh. And I mean, so the implication is that anyone who has, you know, dodgy hair is destined to fail. Yeah. And I mean, you'd wonder, does it, is it the same with tattoos or it's okay for a tattoo? Roy didn't like Boateng 650 pairs of shoes. No, no. Not, not right in the head was the verdict. Yeah, but I can, I can see where that's coming Something from there. a bit more. But I mean, they've got so much time on their hands. Give I them know. a break. They need a haircut or a tattoo or, you know, if they want to buy another pair of shoes, I don't see the problem. In like a, a, a line in the sand that I've become old, I might, basically me and my family all got together, my two brothers were abroad, but like real football, so everybody flew home for the World Cup final, we made a big weekend of it, it was great. I did, you know, cross the line where I did actually say, before I'd heard Brady say it, I said, have you noticed Pogba's just messing around less with his hair and his image? And yeah. I, I wonder if he just... More focused? Something. Or just Deschamps has said to him, right, enough of the crap. You're going to mm. like do things like, you know, mark men and defensive headers and actually help the team and stop with the hair. Yeah. I'd love to know if he did say that to him. I suspect he didn't and I've just become, you know, an old man. I just don't think it makes any difference Of course it whatsoever. doesn't. Uh, I know. It's but just, it's, a bit, but it's, 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 what, it's what they'd like it to be. It's yeah. what, you know, Dunphy and Brady, old school, you know, would like it to be. Uh, you know, they're not messing around with their hair, so therefore, of course, he's going to play better. 
Uh, they're not distracted. Um, I think there's lots of people with funny hair over the years uh, who, who dyed it well. and shaved it. And Ronaldo, Brazilian, had the worst haircut in the history of the world in the O2 World Cup, where yeah. he, he left the, the front part for no good reason and yeah. got the golden boot and won the World Cup. I just think Brady has a thing about hair, and I think anyone who has flamboyant hair uh, he thinks, you know, they're personally rubbing his nose in it. That's that's, uh, <laughs> that's the only thing to conclude. Uh, and no wonder he's suspicious of Keith Andrews. Wow. Therefore, Keith Andrews stole the show at the third, fourth place playoff. If I do say so, the dance. That's quite a. It's it's quite a. It's quite a wig um, uh, that uh, that we have for Keith. Some nice dance moves out of you as well. Thanks. Yeah. No, I was I was auditioning for Dancing with the Stars. Stop really. That. Yeah. Really. That was what it really was. Yeah. He was actually in uh, Brian. Um, whatever his name is, the, the judge <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> you can tell how much it means to me. Yeah. Uh, he was in uh, at Vicar Street the other night. For the uh, live show? For the live show. Very good. Yeah. So I did it, uh, I really pulled out all the stops there with the hips. Yeah. And uh, But I ha still haven't got the call well, I'd from say the producers. After, uh, after this desperate plea, yeah. live on the air. I think, yeah, I think I need it. I think that's what I need. Uh, You'll be on page three or four of the hit list, I'm sure. I'm actually looking at myself there. I do look very like Martin O'Neill, actually, you know, because I'm wearing the, <laughs> I'm wearing the shades. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Martin O'Neill made an appearance on Saturday as well, actually. He did. He did, absolutely, with Eamon. Um, yeah, it was a good, it was a good opportunity uh, for uh, Martin. I didn't see much of him on, uh, on ITV, actually. No. And I think there was only one appearance with, with himself and, and Roy. Yeah, he did a few of the group stages, disappeared, did some NBC, didn't yeah. see much of him at all. Um, did Annie Illich actually completely owned him as well at one stage. Oh, about uh, Croatia? About Croatia and Ireland, what, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the similarities. It says, yes, we've just got better footballers. Yeah. And um, O'Neill said nothing. Uh, he he kind of went, well, yes. <laughs> And that was it. But I like, think you know, he could not think of anything. But if it was Tony O'Donoghue, I'd say Billich was gone. <laughs> yeah. well, that is true. I think also that might have crossed O'Neill's head. Well, if I argue here that we've got great footballers, Tony O'Donoghue will be asking me about that in six months' time. Yeah. But you said we're great players, and now what's the story, Martin? Well, this is it. I know, yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I, think what he said, I think we've got very dangerous players, is what he said. Is that what he said about us? Yeah. Okay. Dangerous, you know, dangerously good, dangerously bad. That's the, that's the question. And he... Quotes, um, highs, lows, moments, memories that will. Well, there's a there's a um, the ether. there's a great one from George Hamilton. I actually saw this game, and Mary Hannigan also included in her quotes. Um, but George Hamilton said, As "Spain have no cutting edge. They're like cutlery you get at an airport. The the plastic version that is, uh, which is not incisive at all. Uh, that's been Spain this year. Plastic." <laughs> So I've never, I've <laughs> never, like he just, he just ran out of steam there, <laughs> that analogy. They, they remind me of, um, yes, plastic. <laughs> uh, whereas, whereas, whereas Italy are more like metal, even though they're not in it. Uh, but Spain, Spain are aluminum, like he could have, he, <laughs> probably unlike him not to have continued with it. Uh, um, Spain being like cutlery you get in an airport is a good start. You feel like that's going somewhere. Yes, it, it, it's. I think it's because he spent so much time in airports um, that it was his nearest and closest source of uh, as a reference. Um, Ronnie Whelan had a lovely one as well about uh, Paris. And she said, uh, "His legs have gone there, haven't they? Uh, he should have picked someone else, but instead he's hoofed it miles over the bear. Uh, his legs literally vanished there." He says. Um, so they they literally vanished. You realise literally. They've, we changed the meaning of literally. Did you see that last year? The dictionary had to say that because we've so all missed... Figuratively, we can't... It, it's, it, this is, what Ronnie said there is absolutely spot on. Oh, you're not... We don't have to say figuratively anymore. We have ruined literally. Ah, oh, well, that's a Literally that's now a means literally... See, that's a disgrace, Joe. <laughs> literally... That, for literally to be used and abused in that manner yeah. is a disgrace. It's been used and abused to the extent that even the dictionary have said we give up. Isn't that shocking? That, but that's terrible. That's what a terrible precedent like, to set. That's that means if we keep abusing a, a word, yeah. that eventually we'll say, oh, listen, you know what, let's just forget it. It doesn't mean that anymore. No. I mean, we both evolve and devolve, and we are literally going the wrong way. Laxadaisy is another one. People are saying all the time, laxadaisy, um, instead of laxadaisical, sure. or, or lackadaisical. Um, <laughs> I sound like Pat. 
volcanic lackadaisical, which is of course incorrect. The correct term is lackadaisical, um, and you'll find in the dictionary, lackadaisy was said by Joe Kinnear. Of course, I'm a great football fan, as you know, uh, Joe. I'm a huge United uh, fan, and um, yes, I'm a great fan of uh, Pogba, uh, Paul Pogba and 80% of his passes were completed with his right foot, uh, controlled with his left. And uh, yes, I like, I like, you know, mucking in with all the guys at the Aviva Stadium in the, in the corporate section where we really let loose. And I saw Ivan Yates out there as well, by the way. He's actually lost a lot of weight, hasn't he? Has he been doing a lot of cycling? But he's, been, but he's also as the quiet as I've ever seen him. In 30 seconds, he didn't say a word from going in and out of the kitchen. He didn't say a thing and didn't interrupt anyone. <laughs> He'll have to do something about that when he goes back into the studio. Ah, oh dear. Oh, God. Apri Match Live. Apri Match Live, yeah. We've got our... Uh, we're in... Uh, where are you? We're in um, Dunleary, the pavilion. Do you even know where you are? No. Down there, you know, most of the time. I mean, it's a, a lovely spot there. The it place. is, yeah. it is. Um, and it is quite little. Uh, you're about to say little, but then you thought, no, I better not, <coughs> I better not patronise no. the man. Um, but yeah, it is. It's, it's um, next Friday. Uh, but that's, um, I think that's packed. Um, but we've got a gig on the 21st of October in Vicar Street. Great. Um, which is the bank holiday uh, weekend and uh, Ticketmaster and all that. Uh, have the details, but um, yeah, we've got kind of introduced a bit of singing and dancing in our show, as the Keith Andrews impression would suggest. Um, probably do some more off the boil captains. I don't know whether you so. I, I believe you were particularly sort of um, nonplussed, shall we say, as to who, who you who was representing you, and indeed how you were being, or was it in fact you? Who told you that? I was um, <laughs> I, I I wasn't I wasn't nonplussed. <laughs> <laughs> you were plussed. I was plussed. Yeah, right. yeah. it was a, a thrill and honour. I mean, look, you'll get me eventually. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely I definitely will, and that's why I wore the glasses actually to uh, to try and do you while I was sitting down beside you to get the dulcet tones and the quiet little timbre. You said to me outside, you know, Richard, that's really you know you you you're, you're about two two octaves too high there. But, uh, <laughs> see, I think when it's mixed, mixed with Eddie O'Sullivan, Eddie, why do you think Ireland actually did uh, win the series in Australia? Well, I don't know. You know, it's, it's hard to put it down to one particular thing, Joe, you know. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think, you know, first of all, Joe, Joe's very clever. Joe, Joe Schmidt's very clever. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's down to that, really. It's down to his tactics. But at the same time, I think he's, he's a bit of a PR disaster, Joe, you know. Yeah, and why is he a bit of a PR disaster? I just think, you know, either... Somebody's fit or they're not fit. You've got to tell us straight up if they're fit or if they're not fit. And that was actually a conversation you had. That literally which, uh, happened, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which uh, confused you, confused me, confused the listeners. But I've just, um, I've just clarified it for everyone, I think. Good. No, this is a thrill. Um, <laughs> 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 Thanks very much for coming in. Delighted. It's been fun. Another World Cup come and gone. Rich yeah, Russia. that was a so speedy four and a half weeks. I know, zipped in in its own way. Ticketmaster is where people can come along and get Ticket their final fix. Yeah, absolutely. Do you yeah. just hear this? We do you tour this all the time. Does this never stop? No, I mean we'll 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 do this year. We'll do a few gigs uh, in the autumn and leading up to Christmas, okay. and then we'll we'll put it to bed. Okay. Yeah. Well, I for one look forward to Richard's guitar. Oh right. Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you meant. There was a little. There was a little string. Yeah, there was a little play on words there. To appear Where there. are we in two years? Uh, that is a good question. The euros, no idea. The how producer. Can we, how can we not know where the euros are in two years? They're in about five different countries, aren't they? Oh, they are. They're That's everywhere. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all over the place. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right. Um, yeah, we're not getting any of the games, though, are we? John Delaney, no. Uh, I maybe thought, one. I thought maybe, maybe one. We might be with a sniff. Anyway, it's too far away to worry about now. Rich Tart, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Joe. Been a pleasure.